how do you incorporate those eating habits, those kind of things that you eat into our daily lives? How do we make the world eat better? Once people get that and they're like, okay, I can be healthy and it tastes really good, it's a win-win. What is chlorophyll water? I've, I don't know what that is. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm so excited that you discovered it today, Thomas. It will change your life. Find foods that are natural. The more natural they are, the more they come from nature directly, the better it is for you. There's like a simple rule to follow. And that's how we can ask ourselves about any food. Is this healthy? Well, how closely connected to nature is it? Hi hey everyone, from Round Glass, this is Living with Sunny. I'm Sunny Singh. I'm here with my friend, Thomas Power. Hi, Thomas. Today, we're gonna to talk about food. We have a very interesting guest. She is a national nutritionist, Liana Warner Gray. Hi, Liana. Hi. Hey, Liana. Hi, Thomas. Now, you know, you are a nutritionist. You have a very intimate relationship with food, but it's also very personal for you. I started by hitting rock bottom with my health 13 years ago. So when I left for university, that's when I started to indulge in fast food. I would eat so much junk food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snacks. I followed my impulses. I followed my cravings. After five years of that, I ended up in hospital getting a biopsy done on a golf ball sized tumor in my throat. It was 3.7 centimeters. Doctor said it was early stages of cancer. That was my wake up call. And that's when I said, okay, I can't keep eating gummy bears for breakfast and pizza for dessert. So that's when I took a look at my diet and I started to create recipes for all my favorite foods, all the cravings I was having, but in a healthy, wholesome way. And I was able to detox and to heal my body. And 13 years later, I am a completely different person. I look different. I My body is completely different. Uh, my mentality around food's different. It's completely transformed. Everybody in some way, shape or form or sometime in their life are saying, Am I eating right? Do I need to change my eating habits? How do we change our relationship with food? And, and you are one of the best people to talk about it because of the very intimate experience and journey you've had with food. For me, I had to really look at food as a very important relationship. And you know, it is the most important relationship that we have because we are doing, we're eating foods all day, every day. So just acknowledging that the relationship we have with food is important and it is worth spending time now just to get it right. And then if we look at food, and this is what I learned from growing up in the outback with the indigenous people. So my school was half white, half Aboriginal kids. And I loved growing up there because we learn about Aboriginal culture and they taught us how to survive from nature and they taught us from age five, I can remember that the healthiest way for us to eat is to get food straight from the bush or the tree or from the soil, straight from the earth in its whole state and then eat it because we're getting the most nutrition possible when we eat it like that. And not only that, we're getting this energy, this life force energy. It's food is spiritual and we're eating, they would say literally we're eating spirit or we're eating God. So if we think about it like that, that the food is nourishing us and we're eating this energy, then we would make different choices. And then the other part is that a lot of people and me being a nutritionist, I do one-on-one -on -one with clients and patients out of a medical center in New York. So with a lot of people, they are very addicted to certain foods, especially sugars, fats, like fried foods and carbs. And so when I get a new patient, I'll say, okay, tell me your favorite foods, cheese, chocolate, hamburgers, cheesecake, whatever it is, ice cream. And I say, you can have it, but there's a different way to have it. And you want to have it that's using natural ingredients. Either make it yourself at home, or nowadays it's so easy to be healthy. It's the easiest time to be healthy now because there's all these amazing brands that make it so easy for us. So we can eat ice cream that is sweetened with monk fruit and made from cashews, for example, that doesn't have dairy and refined sugar and all those chemicals that are really destroying our health. And there's a healthier alternative to everything. And so this is how I love winning people over. I'll say, come over or let me come over and I'll make you, what do you love? Chicken nuggets? I'll make you chicken nuggets and french fries and I'll show you how it can be healthy. And it tastes really, really good. So once people get that and they're like, okay, I can be healthy and it tastes really good, it's a win-win. So Liana, tell us what is a typical food day for you? I always start the day with chlorophyll water. So a nice big glass of filtered water and some chlorophyll drops and 
that is the most important thing that we do is in the beginning of the day because our cells are open and hungry. So you can feel that too when you drink the chlorophyll water, just the cells absorbing it and it's instant energy. So I always start the day with that. And then the small... What is... Can I just... Can I, what chlorophyll did you say? Yeah, chlorophyll water. It went viral on TikTok last year. I've been doing it every single day for 12 years now. And... Um, what, what is it? What is chlorophyll water? I've, I don't know what that is. Okay, awesome. Well, I'm so excited that you're discovering it today, Thomas. It will change your life. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's... Chlorophyll um, water. I thought that's what you put in a swimming pool. <laughs> So chlorophyll water, or well, the edible one, is an extract from dark leafy greens. So any dark leafy greens naturally has chlorophyll. It's a compound. So it's found in spinach, broccoli, kale, spirulina, chlorella. Those are all very, very rich in chlorophyll. But you can get these liquid chlorophyll drops online, drop them into water. It costs like less than 10 cents. It takes less than 10 seconds. And it it's instant energy. It's amazing. A lot of athletes use it to alkalize body it puts a lot of oxygen into the body so it gives you a lot of energy so a lot of athletes use it wow sunny do you do chlorophyll water in the morning i guess i'll start tomorrow yes amazing <laughs> i would highly recommend it and in fact when people ask me what's just the number one thing that i could do if i'm going to do something healthy that's what i always say is just do that green drink every day chlorophyll water is the easiest one what about coffee and tea you haven't said anything about those yet oh Okay, so I've never been a coffee drinker, although coffee does have amazing health benefits as long as people don't overdo it. One coffee a day is is all that you want to have. You know, any more than that, it can burn out your adrenals. You want to let yourself rest. So instead of coffee, though, I eat these little cacao nibs, just pure cacao nibs, which are super bitter. I'll eat two of those, and that's like a little energy hit, like coffee for me. And then I do drink a lot of tea throughout the day. I'll have ginger tea. I'll have matcha tea. Love matcha. I'll do ginger lemon tea as well. Love herbal teas. So, so healthy. All those antioxidants. Gives us so much energy throughout the day. And that was all before lunch. And then I just had lunch before speaking with you guys, which was some baked organic chicken and a big salad. So I filled up on a big salad for, to get all that fiber. Wow. How, yeah, how are you feeling, Sonny? I'm feeling yeah. hungry. No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about who's hungry, but let's, I, I want to first get to the entire routine because I'm loving this. What did you have for dinner yesterday, last night? Last night, I had a chicken noodle soup that I made three days prior. I love making a big chicken noodle soup because it lasts like three or four days in the fridge. It's amazing. And they can just freshen it up each day. So I had a whole entire chicken, organic chicken, and I boiled it for four hours. And then that was the stock. When you boil a whole chicken with the bones, it leaches out all the collagen from the bones. And then you get the collagen. You get this most amazing bone broth. It so healthy, so immune boosting, so great for the winter. It just warms the bones up. And then I put so many vegetables in there. And then I use this organic gluten-free pad thai noodles, these rice noodles to go with it. And it's just, oh, it's just amazing. It's heavenly. So that's what I had last night. Goodness me. I have to ask this question, Leanna, but how many hours a day are you thinking about food? Yeah, I had the same question. <laughs> <laughs> 24-7, I have to say. I'm, I'm so glad you asked me that because it dawned on me a few years ago. I was like, literally all I've done for the last like 13 years is think about food, talk about food, create food. That's it. I even dream about food. I dream about recipes sometimes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I'm so, so grateful to be doing food. I love it. <laughs> when you had the shock of this uh, golf ball size uh, tumor, in your neck this this cancerous tumor was it obvious to you that this was from the food that you were eating or did you think it was to do with a with a trauma or a shock or a, or, or an event or a car crash or some other kind did you instantly think it was food or what how did you get to the bottom of it i did i knew food because of thankfully because of my upbringing because I grew up with the indigenous people that's why I knew that because they taught us that we want to eat foods that come straight from nature and also you know I watched both of my grandfathers die when I was a kid of cancer and they ate very you know unhealthy diets but the aboriginals I looked at them and I was like they don't have cancer cancer doesn't exist diabetes doesn't exist they literally do not have health issues because they live 
from nature and our paleo ancestors did the same indigenous groups from all around the world did the same so i knew that when i went away to university when i was eating all these junk foods i knew i was eating foods that had no nutritional value and it was so far removed from nature and also the tumor was my in my lymphatic system which is the sewage system of the body so if we put in too many toxins and things like that into our lymphatic system it can't handle it it can't take out the toxins and so it backfires and it can cause lymphoma as well and also breast cancer so i knew that it was food and i remember thinking like what have i done to myself and i knew i had done it to myself and that's why i had the confidence that i could undo it that i could also reverse it and heal it drain it out detox it and I could um, transform it. But I didn't know how at the time because I was so addicted to those foods. And this is the problem. This is where people really struggle because they're like, I want to be healthy. I, I know I should eat healthy foods, but I'm craving these things. I'm impulsive to eat these things. So that's where I help people is come to the natural side. Beautiful. You know, Liana, everything you're saying makes uh, such good sense. Now that begs the question, you know, you you live food, but everybody else, other people, they have their day jobs, they have the day stresses, they have family pressures, they have all these things they have to contend with during the course of the day. And I would love to have a regimen like yours. I would love to. How do you incorporate those eating habits, those kind of things that you eat into our daily life? You know, because because everybody cannot have a nutritionist working with them right? Or had the time or had the access or sometimes have the financial resources. How do we make the world eat better? Yeah, good question. So I'm glad that when I first started this journey, I had no money, <laughs> like no money. And so I really had to learn how to be healthy on a budget. And so that is something I'm able to help people with. And I love meeting people where they're at. If they're a busy mom, if they're a stay-at-home mom or if they're a career mom or if they're um, an athlete or someone on a budget and so or someone who can you know it's everyone everyone's in a different place and so meeting people where there's at there's solutions to where every single person is at so um, to speak on a few of the things that you were saying so one is the chlorophyll water I just think is the best like health hack on earth known to humans that we currently have because everyone can afford that everyone can afford that to get that big healthy green drink in the beginning of the day for less than 10 cents is incredible so doing a lot of meal prep things that you can eat fresh for a few days you can also freeze them is amazing i also make a big batch of gluten-free lasagna it's made with green lentil noodles and you can make that vegan or you can add some grass-fed beef to it or some turkey to it and that freezes so well so that way you can go in the freezer and you just grab it out and you you can heat it up and you just have the most amazing amazing lunch or dinner question i want to ask you is about meat you're you're not uh, you're not anti-meat you're pro uh free range meat grass-fed meat how how come someone who is uh, a nutritionist as, as healthy as you is is not a vegan? If that's not too uh, personal a question, because the whole world, it seems to me you, these days you have to ha be a vegan and drive an electric car. That seems to be the new fashion. You know, it's a misconception that being vegan means you're healthy. And it's actually quite the opposite. If you look at our indigenous paleo ancestors, we know what did they eat. Take the Aboriginals, for example. They would eat a lot of vegan foods for sure. A lot of bush bananas and berries and nuts and seeds and, you know, herbs, vegetables. But they also would go hunting. And kangaroos in the outback in the middle of Australia was a source of protein. And they would be very grateful for the animal. For me, I am plant-based. I am 80% to 85% vegan. And then 15 or 20 percent I do include when my body's craving it, especially more in the winter, is craving turkey bacon or grass-fed beef or organic chicken. What do you call then? That's really good. This 85-15, I really like. That's probably what I do myself. What what label do you give an 85-15? <laughs> well, I would say plant-based. And, you know, Dr. Mark Hyman, he coined the phrase pegan, which is your most... You're pegan. A, a you're pegan. most... With just the pegan 
your paleo, just like a little pea, a little bit of paleo, but you're pegan, so you're you're probably that or just plant based. <laughs> oh, I've got to use that at dinner. Pegan. Like oh, brilliant! I'm a pegan. P e g a n. I love it. I've learned a new word on our own show. <laughs> You know, we're doing uh, here at Round Glass a lot of uh, work around eating well. And uh, we also believe that eating well leads to not only physical well-being, but what we call emotional or mental well-being. And you're a big believer of that, too, that what you eat and your eating habits is related to your mental well-being. And there's a mind-body connection to eating. I'd uh, love to hear your, hear your comments and, and, and point of view on this. Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote an entire book on it. <laughs> Um, so I'm a big believer in in the connection between our food and our mental state, our anxiety, depression, and our cognitive function. So um, I loved researching for this book because there are so many studies out there that show that food directly affects our mood, which is why it's so important that we really, you know, eat super healthy every day because it, it's literally feeding our brain. It's firing up our neurotransmitters which are the chemical messengers of the entire body. So dark leafy greens, it's so nourishing for the brain, the nervous system, and then really good healthy fats. So omega-3 fats for the vegans, they can get it from flax seed, chia seed, hemp seed, and then also it's in wild fish as well. So wild salmon, wild tuna. Also spirulina chlorella has amazing, really good healthy fats too. And a lot of good healthy B vitamins also in in certain foods and then turmeric is really good for cognitive function cognitive memory so yeah these are all really important foods for our nervous system and for our brain and it really does make a difference and liana in your book anxiety free food i love that title by the way what's your take on alcohol you know alcohol is bio individual so there are some foods that are bio-individual. They can be medicine for some, but poison for others. So there are studies that show for some people, having one to two drinks a day, they're better off with their mental health than people who don't drink at all. <laughs> can you imagine? And what's your take, Liana, on things like honey as a uh, sugar substitute? Because there are all sorts of different types of honey, aren't there? That's yeah. right. Yeah, honey is amazing. And what I love about honey is... Honey would exist even if us humans didn't exist, right? The honey is always going to be there. It's so natural. It's so beautiful. And it comes straight from nature. And that's how we can ask ourselves about any food. Is this healthy? Well, how closely connected to nature is it? Simple rule of thumb becomes, uh, Leanne, I guess, is find foods that are natural. The more natural they are, the more they come from nature directly, the better it is for you. There's like a simple rule to follow. Very simple rule to follow. And it's something I wish I knew before I started to eat all this fast food because I had the upbringing. I had the foundation of like, okay, the Aboriginals taught me, you know, eat straight from nature. That's going to take care of my body forever. I'm going to be healthy. But then I wasn't taught, okay, how do you eat things like cookie dough and gummy bears and pizza and burgers and fries? How do you eat those things now? And so that's where, when I created the Earth Diet blog, and that's how I started my whole career. So the Earth Diet was that bridge of like, okay, here's how you can eat cookie dough and ice cream for the rest of your life and stay healthy and still enjoy your food. So you're, you know, having your cake and eating it too, basically. And it's really as simple as just look to nature and live as natural a lifestyle as possible in this modern world. You know, pick and choose your poisons, pick and choose your poisons that you put on your skin, around your home and also in your food. You just want to make them as minimal as possible. So Liana, if we have to leave our audience with Three simple bullet points when it comes to food. Three simple things they can follow in their life every day. What would your advice to them be? One would be the chlorophyll. Drink that every single day. Uh, number two would be end the day with ginger tea. To help to reduce inflammation. It takes away cravings for sugar. And number three would be... Pick your biggest obstacle food, whether it's cheese or chocolate ice cream, and make one of my recipe alternatives for that or buy the healthier brand of it and try that. And, um, you know, clear that obstacle food out of the way because for people who really are addicted, that can um, be so overwhelming and just really take you know, their, their entire life and control their entire life. So would um, overcome that the biggest obstacle food that you have first. Wonderful.
start the day with something particular, end the day with something particular, and deal with one obstacle one day at a time when it comes to food. Chlorophyll, ginger tea, maybe a healthier version of a chicken or whatever. Love it. Very, very simple, easy to follow. Thank you, Liana, for being on the show. What a wonderful conversation about food. For every one of you who wants more information on what Liana was talking about and Liana herself, please go to theearthdiet.com. Thank you, Liana. Thank you guys so much for having me on. We would love to hear from you. As you are navigating your journey of holistic well-being and what role food plays in it or on the conversation we had about food today, do write to us and share your feedback at livingwithsunny at round.glass.